Okay. And um, so last week, uh, we kind of covered the basics of creating a view instance. And we will manage to show like the information of one product using view. And uh, today we're gonna adding more interaction to the same online shop. And so, so these are the three main things we'll cover. And the first thing is to the add to cart button. So this is something customers can select to add a product to their shopping cart. And then the second one is about checking the inventory. So usually you have certain limited, can have certain amount of product in your shop. For example, for the cat food, you only have five packs. So before the user can add more to their shopping cart, you need to check the inventory, make sure you still have that in stock. So before adding more, so that's the checking inventory part. And then the finally is show the checkout page. So after user add everything they want into their shopping cart, and then they usually go to the checkout page and to finalize the purchase. And uh, obviously we're not going to cover any payment uh, in this module, and but the checkout page will be actually where you enter their details for the, for example, their name, their contact phone number, etc. And they can make changes to the uh, any select any things they add to the cart. So today we're probably not going to have time to complete the checkout page, but we will just to see how best we can show switch between the checkout page and the normal product page. Okay, uh, so actually we had some interaction already early on uh, in the second lecture when we showed the to-do example and we compared the, between the plain JavaScript version to that of the view version. So when you click on the add button, and we click the add button and then something a new items will be added to the to-do list that itself um, is the interaction if you remember so you can type in your task here or item here and click the add button and this get added to your uh, list down here so that is an interaction so this was the code okay so this is a code when we did it and you without using view so it's this is like the plain JavaScript version. So, and you first need to and get the button. So it has an ID called add button. And also you need to get the task list. And then you say when the button dot unclick, that means when the button was clicked and you do first, you get the new task, which is a field where user typed in, uh, which is field, this field. And then you create a new RI element. You set the text of the RI element as the task field value. So what user typed in, and you add this task item, which is a new RI list to your task list which is the unordered list which is basically this list and then finish uh, that's what make the uh, uh, new items or new task uh, visible on the task to do list and the last one is just to reset the reset this field to empty so the user can type in the next task okay so that's the plain javascript version and this is done using the view version and which will be what we will try to expand or doing something similar for our online shop okay and so uh okay so that's what the two things we used one is a v model which links the new task which is a property in the data component of the view basically it links this property 
with this input field. But also we used V on. And it's something similar to this dot on click that it says when it the this button, because I'm using a type equal to button, is clicked, it will run this thing called item, add item. So this add items is a method in the view. So basically that means when this button is clicked, I can run this function, which is called add item. And these are the uh, the code for the actual add item function. So these code are very similar to the this version. So what it does is you first create a list item, a new list item element, and you set the inner text to new task. And so this is your new task. And if you remember, that was linked to this input field. So basically, this gives you what user what a user typed in in the text field, and then you get the task list. Task list itself is the unordered list, and then you add the items to the end of it, and finally you set the text text field to zero or to empty. If you remember again, new task is defined here, and it's got linked here. That means clear the um, uh, text input field. Okay, and so that's a quick re review of what we did before. We're going to go to in more details, mostly about how to do this V on click today. And we're going to do the V model in more details in, uh, in the lectures later. Okay, and so today, instead of doing this and um, add task or add item button, I'm going to try to, to add a cart add to cart button to the product page and then we're going to also add a second button which is the add checkout button so this is where we kind of stopped the last week we had the page for our online shop we had the title we displayed the information for one product has a picture and some other information about the product itself and today we're going to first try to add this add to cart button uh, the button itself and also the functions that will be run when you click the button and then the checkout button. So that allows you to switch to the checkout page. Okay, so these are the two things we'll plan to do today. Okay, uh, yeah. And so first, we're going to try to add a shopping card array into our view instance. So you can see here, this is like the data for the online shop. And so all these site name and product details is what we used last week to create the display. And today we're going to add in something new. And that's used to save old items people add to the shopping cart. Obviously, obviously, we now only has one product, and so they can only add one thing. But at least we can. So this should work if we have multiple products as well later. So basically, that's the most important thing. We can add an array to my to our data section for the view instance, but which is called cart. So actually, what I'm going to do is. I'm going to start running this now. I'm going to create the code so we can see how it looks like. Uh, let me find. And so it's week four. Week three. Okay. Uh, let me just do and this goes to okay, close these ones. Okay, first, let's find the one we had. Uh, from 
last week, well, we stopped the last week, so that should be in here. Uh, parentable. Okay, and uh, if we're using the go live, and a quick question, is the text too small on my screen? Yeah, too small. Uh, is this okay now? Or even bigger? I think that's, no, that's too big. <laughs> that's too big? Yeah. Okay, I'll go here. Yeah, that's good. I mean, I think it really depends on the screen you are using. The people, if you're looking at the laptop, I might still be too small. Okay, uh, let's go back here. At least you can see. So this is where we stopped the last time. So we had this and page. We created our very simple view app. So use this one. I give it a name called Web Stores, the view instance. It says EL. So we link to this element whose ID, hashtag means ID is app. So that's this one here. And then we define the data inside data. We use site name. Uh, so which says view.js pet depot. And this is going to be used here. Let's use a site name to show as a value for the H1. So that's why we have this H1 here. I can make this one a bit smaller and this side a bit bigger. And also we have this product and object contains all the information about the product. And some of these are displayed like the title, cat food, 20 pound bag. 25 pound bag, it's going to be used here. Use the product title and description is used here. Description and then the image is instead of using the actual image, we give it the file direct directory and the file name of the picture. So this can be bound to the source property of the image element. So V bind, use that, and then let's give you this picture here. Uh, okay, so actually I think there's one thing at the end of last week we didn't quite discuss, uh, is the difference between using uh, V HTML and the V text. And so if you use V text, the values you're given will be treated as text. And so product.title will be here, product title, cat for 25 pound bag. And when you use the HTML, the value will be treated as HTML. So in this case, product.description, its value is here, will be treated as HTML code. So as you can see in here, we have this EM tag, which makes the text italic. So when this is treated as HTML code, you can see the irresistible, irres irresistible text is now italic. And but you can, and if you use this as V text, yeah, if I change that to V text, then everything here will be treated as text instead of HTML code. So you can see here, instead of showing an italic ir irresistible, it will show its EM tag and treat it as, as text, which is not exactly what we want to do here. So that's why we're using the HTML in this case. Okay, and so now today we're gonna to continue from there and then by adding more to the um, page, and so the, eh, where did my slides go? Uh, where's my lecture slides go? Not this one, yeah. So the first part, we just add this cart array to the data part of our code or our view instance. So, so to do that first, actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna 
just make a copy of what we had last week and start from there. Um, so interaction, I'm going to do a new folder, uh, demo, and then I'm going to copy over the files we used the last week there. Okay, uh, so I'll give it open this one now, which is currently should look exactly the same as before. <clears throat> if we can try to run this in the ah. Sorry, too many windows. Okay. Um, so, see this, I mean, you would not see any difference visual. Ah, oh, there is some difference now. Are we missing the... Ah, oh, we haven't added the, the description yet here. Um, so, we're going to do a paragraph. The HTML equal to product dot description. Okay, uh, and then finally, maybe we add the price as well. So a paragraph. I will do V text. Ah, uh, so we do price. Uh, per duct dot okay so what we can see here is oh that's a super expensive cat food make it slightly cheaper and so what you can see here maybe this is other things to introduce is this and this is the shorthand, so to use some to display some values from the view instance. So say the product dot price refers to product dot price here. So that means I want to show this property of the product object. And instead of using vtext or vhtml, you can just use double curly bracket, and which achieves the same results. As v, I can't remember, it's vtex or vhtml, but one of those. So you can see that's why on the page now we have this 20. So I put a little pound sign before, so that's why it shows price 20, 20 pounds. Okay, now back to what we were trying to do initially. Uh, so we add the array to our data object. So I can have a cart, which is an array, which will store everything user added to the shopping cart. Currently, it will be, initially it will be empty. Okay, and if you look at the page itself, nothing changes because we only add new attributes in your data. We haven't do anything yet. So let's get back to, oh, let's go back to the actual code. And so next thing we want to do uh, is binding to the DOM elements. So basically, we want to define uh, an interaction or action function will be run when the button was clicked. And so we already seen in the previous, in the to-do example. So the thing you use here is V on. Okay, and we're gonna just go through this example again. So. And you add this inside the element you want to do. Uh, add the interaction to. So in this case, it's a P paragraph, which is slightly unusual. Most likely, say for example, this could be a button. And V on. So that's the view directive. 
so view will recognize this and then will know how to process or using the information below. So you have to always use V on and there's a column and then this is the event name. So you can have different events. So most common one will be click. So this is what we have here, V on click and could be other events, for example, mouse over, etc. And then this in this quotation mark and you can put in some JavaScript. You can actually put actual JavaScript code in there. But in most cases, it, this will be a name of a JavaScript function defined in your view method section, and that will be run there. And so this is from, I think previously, from the to do app button, to do app example. So you have the V on, and here the event is click. And what you do is add items. So add item is a function defining your view instance and the actual code will goes there. So that what happens is then when this button is clicked, this function will be run and do whatever job it meant to do. And so we're going to do something similar. So we're going to create a button instead of called uh, add, it will be called add to cart. And when it's clicked, it will do some uh, run some code as well. Okay. Uh, okay. And uh, so just as the double curly bracket shorthand we showed before, and uh, there's another shorthand in terms of using V on, you can use the at sign. And so this is the example we just saw from the last slide. So you say V on column and click, and you can use at sign. So it's slightly shorter. So instead of typing in V on column, you can just use at. So it's the same thing. So in the future, we might use this a bit more, and as it's um, shorter, it's only just one symbol. It's easier to type. OK. and. Uh, Okay, so for now, um, all we want to do is when the user click on the button, uh, we're going to say V on click or add click to the function. The function, we're going to call it add to cart. So you know exactly what that means. So this will be a function. And what it does is says this dot cart dot push. And so if you remember, so this dot cart refers to this array. We just added it to the data section. And the push function of the JavaScript array add something which is in the uh, bracket here to the end of the array. Uh, so what it end is this dot product dot ID. So this again refers to the view instance itself and then product, and then ID. And so what it does, it will add 1001 to the array when user click the add to cart button. Okay. <clears throat> so this is the event function, yeah. As I explained before, that means when, whenever user okay. click this add to cart button, and the product ID is got to add to the cart array. Sorry, sir. Mm -hmm. Instead of the ID in the, in the brackets, yeah, this dot product dot ID. Can we yeah. use the other property from from the product? Yes, yes. And so, what do you want to add to the array? Mm -hmm. And you can decide. You can say this product dot ID or this product dot whatever we have title or description. You can add okay. anything there. You can decide, okay. and uh, it's just here. It's easier for the code to later figure out and um, which product that is. If you're just using the ID, you can match it with the product. That's why we use it here. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Mm. Um. Okay. Uh. Yeah. So. This one is quite important. 
And so in theory, you can actually also push the this dot product instead of ID. Okay. Uh, so maybe let me just put that in so it makes it clear to see. So we had data. Now we have our method section. And then here we all have our add to cart, which is the first function. Uh, Mm. I'm going to do this dot cart dot push and then this dot product dot id. Uh, oh, certainly I'm missing something. There's lots of little curly bracket here. Comma expected. Hmm. Oh, you don't have methods. You have method. Oh, sorry. Yes, yes. Keep doing that. No. Do I? I think the cart actually should be okay. I just don't need one here. Or is it? No. Ah, sorry. Misspelled the function. Okay, now that's better. Semicolon. Mm, and someone's saying probably in semicolon here, and it's okay. Uh, the last sentence is usually its last line is usually okay. You can get away without a semicolon. And if it doesn't like, it will show some curly line here, as before. Okay. Ah, uh, so the point. I'm trying to make is instead of pushing the ID, and it's also possible to push the entire product object here. Okay, and there's subtle differences. And when you're pushing the ID, which essentially just a number, and you make a copy of this value and we'll add it to the array here. But when you're pushing a object, which is this entire thing, and what happens is it adds a reference to your array, not actual object. So what happens is and JavaScript will, will not make a copy of this entire object and add to the array here. Instead, it will have a reference here pointing to this project, so to point to this product object. That's the main difference. And so sometimes that might be the behavior you want, but sometimes it might not be. Okay. And so that fin finishes the event function. And now we're going to add to the actual button. So I guess this is relatively easy. We're going to just add a button on our page. And the button will be called add to cards. And then we're going to use the V on here now. So, so when it's click, I'm going to run my event function, which is called add to cart, which we just defined. So if we go back to our page now, let's say we add the button here. As we said, and the button itself will be called add to cart. And the more interesting part will be here, or I say v on or at. Click equal to add to cart. Okay. Uh, if we look at the oh yeah this page now, and you can see now we have this add to button showed up here, and if we click. Obviously, you can't see much there, but if we turn on the development console, come on, right click. Mm, quite slow. And go to the view part. You can see uh, it's recognized. Maybe it can make it a bit smaller. Yeah, it recognizes a root. 
and there's everything else in the root. In the, okay, let me maybe put it on the side. Okay, and if I, and you can see now, and in the cart array, I already had a two. Ah, sorry. And here I had two actually objects because in the code, I'm still saying this dot product. So it's pushing the actual object every time. And if I keep adding this, keep pressing this, I'm going to get even more added to my root, sorry, my cart array. So I click it twice again. So that's the other thing. And to see the changes here, you have to actually manually refresh every time. So if I refresh again, you got, I have two more. If I click and I refresh again, you have two more, uh, another one. And so you can see this is an object, which is the entire product. So for this demo, so we might just still want to stick with the ID for now. Now I refresh my, so the live server refresh the page and you can see in the root now, the array is empty, the cart array is zero, there's nothing there. If I click this once and I refresh to here, like you can see it's at an ID now. And then try it again and then refresh at the second one. So we know this part is working, even the page itself and hadn't really changed much yet. Okay, so let's get back to the slides now. Uh, how do I, yeah. Okay, so now we have the button and we have the event function for the button now. Mm, this is the, yeah. Okay, so this is just what we did. We added the button into the actual HTML page by using button and with the V on click. Okay, and this is just what the uh, code would look like now, or the view part would look like now. So with the new um, cart array and our, our add to cart function. In this case, we're pushing the ID in and instead of the actual product object. Okay, uh, yeah, we've done this part as well. So once we started, we can um, open the view panel, which I saw in the developer tools. And once you started to click the add to cart button, you can see the array here will get updated. So in this case, we click the three times. So the, pro the product is at three times and with the ID add to the array. Okay, so that's the end of the first part. And uh, the next part will be the checking the inventories just to make sure we have the amount of cat food that user want. And we have to stop user from adding more if we run out of inventory. Okay, and here we're going to introduce something called the computed property. And so it's a still property, but you don't create that in the data section explicitly. Okay, and the first we want to do is we want to show on the checkout button, show the number of items in the cart. So currently we can only see that and by using the develop console, we can see how many things already added in the cart. And uh, we want the user be able to see that well, as well on the, on the site or in the app. So this is something we'll do with computed property to do this. Okay, and the way to use property is very similar to anything else. You define the data, you can use curly bracket, double curly bracket, or use VTEX or VHTML, probably VTEX to display the value. Okay, and uh, so the difference is the computed property is derived from the state of the application. So usually you have a few, some code to calculate a value and that value is use for display. I'm going to see the examples very quickly. Okay, and so first is this part and compute it. So just as say the data, the method, 
that's another component of the VUS. So similar to say EL or data or message, there's a new thing which is called computed that says everything inside will be computed property. And this will be the name of the computed property and it's called cart item count. So counting how many items are there in your cart. And as I said, and usually you will be some code to do some run uh, some calculation and code logics to return the value. So in, in this case, it just returns and this and dot cart dot lens. So essentially it just means the lens of the cart array. And if it's empty or zero, it will just return empty. So basically it will return the lens of this cart. Oh, sorry, this cart array. Okay. Okay. And so because this is a computed property, and the cart item count should not be in the data part. So if we look at the code, it should not be in here, somewhere inside here. Instead, it should have its own section called computed and being there. Because the value changes, every time the new user adds something more to the cart, the value would change. So, okay. Okay, so this is where we add actually the checkout button, if you remember. Uh, so first, let's do this, add this one to our code. So add this computed property. As I mentioned, this will be a new section called computed. And inside we'll have our first computed property, which is called cart item count. And it's a function. What it does is it will return um, this dot cart dot lens, or if that's false, and it will just return something empty. Okay, so that's what we're doing here. This is our function. Well, sorry, the new computed property. And the next part, what we do is we're going to add the buttons to the page and display the number of items in the cart. And so this is the part that's new. So we're adding a new button. And in the button, we're going to display cart item count. And which is the properties we just defined here. And you can see I'm using double curly brackets. So that's the shorthand to show the values of this property view property. And just similar as say the site name, which is a property in the data section. Ah, here I just called name instead of site name. Yeah, and then Okay, so this is something else we're going to show you later on. Uh, this part actually shows a little shopping cart icon. I'm going to cover that, how to do that in a second. And then finally, we have the checkout part. The checkout part is just the text. So that's what it shows up on the button, or just call it checkout. Okay, so this would be what it looks like. So we're going to have this. At the end, has this checkout button. So when it's empty, it shows actually it will be empty, a little icon, and then the checkout text. Okay, I'm going to add that to my code now so you can see. Uh, we had computed the property, so we just need to add the button. Here, we put it further up here, so just below the title, but before the text, before the product image. Uh, okay, so I'm going to start with the simplest one. So I just add the button and give it a label called checkout. And if you go to the, where is my, yeah. If you go to the actual app or the site, you can see 
you have this checkout button now. Ah, it's a bit weird. And so currently, and um, this picture, actually the product picture displays right next to the checkout. And because the checkout button is a inline element. So one way to do this, let me see if I did that in my code. Uh, ah, okay. So in the code, I put that in the header section. So the set header section, including the site title and the bottom. So that's one way to um, force this picture onto on below rather than saying next to the checkout button. Or you can put that inside the div. But I think uh, header is probably a better way to do this. So we had a header and we close this. I have this I'll format this properly and now I'll save. Okay. Ah, uh, hmm. Okay. So these two are now very close, but at least that moves below and because of the header. Uh, so just to give it a tiny bit of space, maybe do a P on which put this picture inside the paragraph and give you a little bit of space. The paragraph usually has a little bit margin by default. Okay, and so this is the easy part, which is add a button to your page. And uh, the next part is to display the a few things we wanted. Uh, so we want to display the number of items in the cart and a little cart icon. And so display the number of items in the card is relatively easier. So we just need to call or use the computer property we just defined. So if we just say here, I'll put, because it's the same as use any other data properties. So we just say what is called card item count. Oh. And this should give you this. Okay, currently, and it's still, you can't really see any difference, but it should be a little bit extra space in front now. And because there's nothing, so you don't see every, anything there. And if I click this once, and you can see now that becomes one. Again, two, three, four, five, you can just keep going, it will increase. Yeah, so that part is going. Uh, it's working so every time you click here and this card item count property get updated because uh, the card array its length changed and that get updated here so the user can see new things being added to your shopping cart okay and so now we're going to do this part and which add the little icons we need. So that's this little icon here. Okay, so there's a post, uh, I'm not sure even it's possible. And but uh, say you can add this one as a little picture inside your button. But today we're going to introduce something different, which actually just add something HTML will think it as a text, but allows you to show the icons in your on your page. Okay, so this is needs external library, and we're going to use something called uh, Font Awesome. And um, so it allows you to add icons to your page just as text. You don't have to treat it as an image. So the way it works is you don't have to do something like image like this to add that to your page. Instead, of just add text like the checkout or other things. Okay, and then the because it's a library, you have to first load it as an external CSS file. So we need something like this. So the way it works is very similar to, for example, how we load view. Say this is how we load view. We have to go to this online server and download the view file this way. 
And the difference is the font awesome is working as a CSS file, uh, not a JavaScript file. So instead of using script, script tag use link and set relationship equal to style sheet. And then afterwards is just the, the URL linked to the file. So this is what we're going to use. We can add this to our code. And just to here. Uh, uh, gonna... Okay, so we add this style sheet to our page and uh, the link. There's a few different options, but anywhere that's hosting the font awesome library CSS file, that will work. And then we save this part. Now we can use. And so this is uh, what the font awesome website looks like. Okay, next thing is you need to go find the icons you want to use. Uh, is that link there? No, there's no link there. So we're going to just go to the website now. Uh, maybe using the other tab will be better. So we're going to go to font awesome website. And then the first thing you do, do it, ah, that's the link there. That will be faster. And uh, so you need to searching for the icons you want and make sure you choose the free one. And because the non-free ones you have to pay, you will not be able to use it in your website freely. So this is what we're going to do. So we go to uh, the website. Oh, sorry, where is it? And so go to the icons. Um, hang on, I think I might have a delivery. Just what? I'll be right back. Okay, and sorry about that. Uh, so you choose the free option. So make sure you're only getting the free icons. And then you can search in for by typing in here the icons you want. And uh, so you can, I don't know, and you can assume they have different ones. So you can, for example, you want the sports or you want a cat can have different icons. In this case, we want shopping cart. So all I'm going to search for is cart. OK. And then the next step is you need to know down the code for your icon. So you can see for each icon, there's a little bit text below. So this is the code that you can reference to use these icons on your page. Um, so in this case, uh, the code will be cart plus. Uh, maybe it will be easier to see here. Ah, it's quite small as well. It just says cart plus. It's quite small text. Oh, it's actually loading the actual icons. I uh, don't really need this one. Uh, go back. Okay, so once you know the code for your icon, then you can add it to your page. So you do something like this. And so it's recommended to put that inside a spam element. So spam is like the equivalent of div, but only for inline elements. And then you say class. So just as you would define a class for any element when you do CSS formatting, and then you have to first to say FAS. And that means this is the font awesome class. OK, stands is a, means it's a font awesome icon. And then FA, again, font awesome dash. And then this part will be the code you copied here. So in this case, if you want this one, you put cart plus. Yeah. 
Okay, so this is how you add the call. So let's go to our actual code. So we want to add the icons to our checkout button, which is here. As we said, we have to use first a span element. So let's put a span element here in. Okay, and we need to give it some class for the formatting. So first you say FAS to say this is a font awesome icon and you put actual code. And the code always start with FA, again, it stands for font awesome. And you say cart plus. And you, when you, after you save, uh, it should show up on this page now. Okay, you can see there's a little and shopping cart icon here, there now. And for example, if I use a different shopping cart, let's say this one, or maybe this one will be easier. It just says shopping cart. And it will give you a different icon. So I can just put uh, FA and the code there. It's very small, and but it just says shopping cart. So, oh, I can do shopping cart. And if you go back here, and then I'll come here and I save. And you can see a different shopping cart icon is loaded here. And basically, you can change anything there if you want. Okay, maybe something completely different, which is a carrot. And you can just say FA. Carrot. Which is completely not the most appropriate one, but it shows there. Okay. And um, so let's change back this one to the shopping cart, which is what we needed. Ooh. Uh, the extra. Okay. Uh, so you can use icons this way and anywhere in your on your page. It doesn't have to be a button, could be anywhere. For example, let's say if I want to add a cat button, a uh, cat, sorry, a cat icons for my, inside my, let's say the paragraph. Where did I show? Uh, that's the image. Search to, uh, okay. Let's just say I want a cat icon here, just before my price. So I need to find the code for my cat icon. So yeah, so in this case, it's just called cat. And uh, I can add something again. We start with a spam and you make it a class equal to. So first is FAS and then FAS cat. Yeah. And then we have a little cat cat icons. Oh, sorry. Uh, the second one should be FA cat, not FAS. Okay, then you can see a little cat there now on my tech, on my page. Okay. So there's lots of different icons you can choose from. Uh, I think for the free one, you have over 1,500 different ones. Yeah, 1,600 and nine. So you can use always use all of these on your page. Okay, so that's how we add this icon. So we're gonna now go to the last part. It's about the, like the checking the. Sorry, sorry. Hi. Uh, do you mind just uh, showing the um, piece of code with the computed, the computed one? Uh, the computed one. The, the computed one is here. Yeah. Okay. Card icon. So this will be the name of your computed property. And okay. instead of call something yeah. similar to say name or product, mm -hmm. it's called kind items. But instead of writing actual values, you use a function because the value would change. And uh, in this case, it returns this dot cart dot lens. So that returns the lens of this array. 
but you can do a more complex one. You can do tensor this dot cut lens plus two or something else with it as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay, and in terms of back to the inventory checking, so we want to make sure we have enough stock. When, you, for example, if a user want to buy 10 cat food, 10 packs, but we only have five, we can't allow user to buy that many because we just don't have those in stock. Okay, and then we're gonna first and just add a property inside the product to say, to record how many we currently have in, uh, in stock. So we just call this one available inventory, uh, which is this one here. So let's just set it to five. So it says we have five pack. So if we go back to our code for our product, uh, we just say an available inventory is five. So this is just a new property. And then we're going to use that later to check if we have enough. So, so long as what the user wants is customer want is less than five or equal to five, then that's okay. If it's more than five, then we can't, we don't have them. Okay. And so, so basically this needs to, and the things is when user starting to adding items and to their shopping cart, we don't want to change the inventory level or stock level at that time yet. So that should only changes after user committed, say go to the checkout page and uh, press the say purchase button. Okay, so that's what should happen. So instead we just to restrict, say the user you cannot add to their cart more than what we have in stock. So if we have five in stock, and then we should not allow user to add more than five into their shopping cart. Okay. Um, so again, we use another computed property to do this, and there's many different ways you can do, but here uh, we're gonna use another computed property, and this time called can add to cart. Okay, the name you can decide and just as descriptive as possible, but sometimes not too long. So this is getting a little bit too long. So all we need and um, is just need to check whether the user can add more to the cart. So we just need a Boolean value, which is done here. So it will return the Boolean value is this dot product dot available inventory. So that's a property we just added, if you remember. So this dot product dot available inventory is set to five and is greater than this dot cart item count. So if you know the cart item count is the other computer property we defined early, which says how many are there in the shopping cart. So if the available inventory is bigger than the cart item count, then you can add more. Once the two are the same, and this will return false. And then we can use that value to disable user or stop the user from adding more. Okay, and so in terms of using this and can add to cart, and the way we use it is similar as any other data properties. Okay, and so that relates to another thing is, so what we want to do is, we want to stop the user from adding more product if uh, the number in the cart is similar or more than the stock level, okay. What we're gonna do is we're gonna do this by hiding the add to cart button. So that's a little bit extreme. But uh, at least if we hide the add to cart button, then the user cannot add any more. 
and we can do this using a different view directive called vshow. So what that is here, it says vshow equal to add, can add to cart. If you remember, the can add to cart is a computer property to return either a true or false value. So only when this is true, uh, this will be displayed. That's what the vshow does. When it becomes the false, this will be hidden, then the add to cart button will be no longer on the page. Okay. Uh, so I have a quick question. Yeah. Uh, can we just here use an if condition that uh, if the quantity is zero, we cannot add it instead of hiding the button? Um, if the quantity is not, no, you have to put the condition here. Something yeah. similar to what you defined in the computer property. And usually it's not recommended because it's getting a little bit too long and uh, you're mixing the code with the um, HTML. Okay. Yeah. Um, is it possible to then hide the button but then display a different text where the button usually is? So, for example, there's no more stock? Yes, yes, that's fine. Actually, I think that's what we're going to do later if we have time. It's actually we can potentially disable the button, not instead of remove it completely. So you can't really click it anymore. Or as you said, maybe sh um, show a different message. That's all okay. Okay, and um, yeah. So let's do this now. So first we need to add the new computer property to our code. So I'm gonna do, come here. I'm gonna add a new one. Can add to cart. So this will be a function. And what it will return is say this dot product dot available infantry has to be greater than uh, the other one, cart item count. Yeah, so that's all it does. Just to check and whether that's true or false. And the next step is we're going to use that to control whether we want to show the add to cart button. Yeah, and so it only shows this element, which is the button, if the condition is true. Again, we go back to, so the button we want to modify is this one. Uh, so here we already have the V on click equal to add to the cart. And then can say v show equal to can add to cart. And that's it. So now every time the user click, the, uh, this will be checked to make to decide whether we can still user can still add more or not. Ah. Okay, so we're having some problems here. So the page disappeared. Uh, don't see any errors here. Let's see what the errors are. Uh, yeah. Card item count is not defined. Huh? Really? Oh, uh, settings, preserve log. Uh, so I think you're supposed to put uh, this dot cut item count in the um, Ah, oh, yes, yes. Very good. Very good point. I think that's what I missed, probably. I yes, yes. an example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A different one. Okay. So, cute. And hopefully, you'll be happy now. Yeah, okay. There's no more errors. It's all looking fine. And yeah, we can start it to use this. We can add. So that's one, two, three. You can see it's changed now. Four, 
and if I add again, it should disappear. Okay, yeah, now it disappears. Yeah, so that's what we wanted, or I mean, this is what we hope to have. Okay, so it's all working now. Hmm. Okay, ah, yeah, this is just a picture, i show you what it looks like. And when you have five in the checkout, and there's no more add to cut button here. Okay, and then as we already mentioned, uh, making the button disappear may be a little bit too much. And uh, more likely, for example, you have a disabled button instead, instead of removing the button completely. Okay, and to do this, we're going to using something else again. So instead of using V show, we're going to using V if and V else. And so the idea will be say, if we can still add more and we show an enabled button else, that means you can't add any more. We're going to show a disabled button. Yeah. Ah, actually, that might be other possibilities to do this. For example, you can bind the disabled property of the button to the can add more, and then you might be able to do it that way as well. But, but for now, we're just going to just look at how to do this using VIF and VLS. So these are the two new uh, view directives. Okay, and so this is uh, how do you use VF? And so you had a button, and inside it, using a new view directive. So we tried V show or V on click. This is a different one. And uh, this is our condition can add, add to cart, which is a computed property. And then, so what happens is this button will be displayed if this becomes true. So in that sense, it's very similar um, to the V show. Basically, if the condition is true, then you will show the element. But because using the V if you can use you can have the uh, you can have the V at the else as well. So that means if this condition is not true, previously it will not show anything, just hide it. And then we can use the V else to add a disabled or display a disabled button. Okay. So basically in the code, we have two buttons. One is enabled, the other is disabled. And then we show which button depends on the condition. Okay. Uh, so first we're gonna have these two buttons. We actually already have this one, uh, which is the add to cart. But here, uh, instead of in V show, uh, we're gonna using V if. That's the only changes we're gonna make. So if we look at here, where is our button? Ah, oh, it's here. And so if instead of using V show, we're gonna using V if. And then if we don't add the second button, it will be exactly the same. Uh, if you go, go to the page and they're starting adding more, when it becomes five, and this one will disappear. That's exactly the same as before. Now we're gonna add a second button, but in this case, it says disabled equal to disabled. That means this button is disabled and, and you also had the V else here. So that means when this condition is false, it will go here instead of display nothing. So that goes to the code here. So that's our second button. Uh, we still have the same text, which is add to cart. But this one, it will be a disabled one. Uh, equal to, and this is only displayed if the previous uh, condition is false. So you don't have to any put any new condition here. 
So all you, all you need to say it is V else. But that also means it must have a V if before it. Otherwise, it don't this V else will not work properly. And now if we go back to the page, uh, actually maybe just look at it. And so for example, now when you have five in the checkout, you should see something like this. And the button is now disabled instead of to complete disappear. Uh, let me find the page. You can start trying. Uh, add so that's one, and two, three, four, and five. Now you can see, and now instead of showing a enabled button, the button becomes disabled, so you can't add anymore. So probably this is better than say just hiding the button completely. Okay, we have about the last part is to show the checkout page. We might be able to just finish that in time. Okay, and the idea is, so we're not gonna create a new HTML file for the checkout page. Instead, the checkout will be a new section of the same page, but we only show either the product page or the checkout page, one of them at a time. Yeah, so, and so far we don't have any checkout page yet, and we will add a checkout page that becomes visible and is when the checkout button is clicked. So basically when the user click this button, so so far we updated the, uh, the numbers and icons, etc. But when the user actually click the button, it doesn't do anything yet. Now we're gonna, use that to hide the product page and show the checkout page when you the first clicked it. And if you click that again, it will hide the checkout page and go show the product page. So it's like a switch, switching between the two displays. That's the main idea. Okay, and uh, so for that, first we need a new property, uh, just to say, use that to indicate whether we want to show the product page and the default value will be true. So that is the part, Ooh. that will be the default value. So we default by default, we'll show the product page. So that's gonna be the easy part. Uh, we say name card and we say show product give by default value, oh, this spell, true. Ah, I'm not. Okay, and uh, this is slightly more complicated. And so this will be the actual function to switch the values between true and false. So what it does is if this value was true, it will change it to false, and if it's false, it will change it to true. And we're gonna use, you can use if else to do this. You can say, if show product equal to true, true, you make it false, and else make it true, for example. And this is just a shorthand to do this. Uh, okay, I'm gonna explain how that work a little bit. So the value, of this and depends on the value of this. And if this value is true, then this part will become the first one or this value. And if this value is false, we're gonna use this value given to this variable. Okay, so it's called a ternary operation. That's because you have three parts, one, two, and three. So it's a shortcut for if and else. Yeah, so I show the example code below. So this is this line 
is the equivalent of this part. It says if this dot product is true, instead of in equal to true, just that it says this product equal to false. That's the first value here. Else, else means this one is false, and you say this dot product equal to true, which is the second value here. Ah, okay. And also, there's two this dot show product, so that may be slightly confusing. And the first this dot show product is what used here. And this, the second this dot show product is the this one here. Okay, yeah, I know it's slightly confusing, but uh, basically the values given to the left hand side is depends on the value of this expression. If it's true, the first value will be given. And if the value of this part is false, the second part value will be given to the left hand side. Yeah, and the first one is the condition, which is this one. And then if it results true, it will give you the first value here. This happened to be false. And here, the force is just a value. It could be one, two, three, four, or text string, or anything else. And finally, if this one is false, if you use a value here, again, this can be a number, could be text, or anything else. Here, it just happened to be a Boolean value. And this is equivalent to that. Okay, uh, so let's just add this one to our methods now. So we already have the show product property in our data part. Uh, we just need to add this one to the method. Uh, I think this has to be a comma now. And I'll just say show check out. this dot show product equal to this dot show product and uh, what is it yeah question mark force column true yeah yeah force and true and so basically that switches values because if it's true you get the force, and if it's false, you get true. So it switches values every single time. And just one more thing to further simplify is instead of, of showing writing this way, this is what we are currently doing now. You can say and show checkout, which is a function with no parameters, and you can write it like this. So you don't have to write the function part. So you just say, ah, this is what we just did. And like this. So if you look at this one, you had the name of the method and it says function and empty bracket and what's actually function coded. But instead, you can also do this as well. Obviously, a little bit shorter than this. But basically, just say the name of the function, any parameters and what it is. So these two are the equivalent. So this is equivalent to and show checkout is a function and empty blah, blah blah. So that's so you can remove this part and it should still work. Another way to write a slightly less code. And so this is introduced in ES6, which is also where, for example, we introduce the arrow function or say the let and constant these things. Okay. Uh, so then we can use the checkout button to change the display depends on the value of this show product variable. Okay.
uh, how much time do we have left? Oh, five minutes, hopefully, yeah. Okay, again, so the way we're going to do this is we're going to using the and V if and L, V else, which we already used to show the normal button and disable the button here. We're going to say if show product, I'm going to show the product page. Otherwise, V else, I'm going to show the checkout page. Yeah. And then the, every time you click the checkout button, its value will be changed between true and false. And as a result, it will switch between these two pages. OK, let's just do that now. So you have to do this on your HTML section part. So for example, I'm going to keep the header part because we want the uh, shop title and the checkout button all the time. But instead, I'm going to hide this part. This will be my uh, show pr uh, the product part. I'm going to put this one in one div. OK, and then I'm going to put another div. Okay. Uh, div. So this will be my checkout page. And currently, it will be empty which is completely fine. But the, the useful part is we're going to switch between these two depends on the value of show product. Uh, so that means, so if show product is true, uh, which is the default value, this part is going to be show because this is all inside this div. And otherwise, V else is show this part and currently it will be empty and that's okay we can add more to that later so if we go back to the actual page and so now if i click the checker button if everything works it should hide the entire product page oh it didn't uh, Did I miss anything? Console, nothing. Mm. Huh? The checkout page didn't work. Uh, I think you have to close your div else. And uh, this one. Yeah. And this div is closed. This is that's the closing tag. Okay. Closing closing div tag there. All right. Uh, let me just check the slides to see. Ah, oh, I think it's the checkout button. Uh. Okay. So what what we didn't do is. When we click on the checkout button, now it should call our method. Uh, this where was the method? Oh, sorry, and show checkout, which actually how do I say and change the values and of the show product property. So we need to add this one to here. The bottom. And then if you remember, we're going to use V on uh, click. Or in this case, we're going to use the shorthand. Just say at click. And we're going to run that function is what is called. I forgot now. Uh, the method called show checkout. Well, that's going to be show, show product checkout. Okay. Uh, yeah, show sure, checkout. And let's try again. Da -da. Yay. Okay, it works. Because now it's, and when we click the checkout, it actually starts to do something, which is checking, sorry, switching the values of show product. And I check it, click again, it should come back. 
And then you can imagine next week, we're going to add more to the actual checkout the page. But for now, is checkout just allow you to switch between the two sections, or rather show one section at a time. Okay. Yeah. So that's it now. Uh, ah, yes, exactly. So that's the part I missed. Yeah, so we're going to stop now, and in terms of reading for this week, it will be the chapter three of the book, and about uh, adding interactivity. Okay, that's it. Uh, just right on time. Yeah. Okay, that's it for today. Thanks a lot.